Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron for the New Order as Ust Sostalsk Gumilyov is still in power but not for long because this episode we shall be taking out the collaborators in Samara as well as the simps in Permhain and we shall be reuniting West Rush under our banner which um, which will be Ust Sostalsk for quite a while before we form the Western Russian uh, is, is it, yeah, Western Russian Free Republic. I hate that it's Western Russian Free Republic instead of West Russian Free Republic. I mean, or like Repub no, Free Republic of Western Russia would probably be my ideal one. But either way, let us go. Now, what are we working on? I, our production is still... I don't, know what's, I don't know what's after happening to our production this game, but it's terrible. Now, control the factories. Now, do I have the game muted? I believe I do. I do, but I already have the music off. Not bad. But I don't need the game. There we, oh, it was, it was, it was going to do it. Now, oh, there we are. Uh, here we are. Thank you. Now, control the factories. You get two military factories in Nizhny Novgorod, whereas the current personnel running the factories of Nizhny Novgorod are at least semi-competent. They are hardly loyal to us, and only uh, us. Haven't seen them before. Uh, a less charitable state um, could denounce them as a pack of mercenaries loyal only to profit. In light of this, some changes in their management must be pursued rather than following the logic of the bandits' market. The heavy industry of Nizhny Novgorod must be put under direct control for the purpose of aiding our sacred task to reunify the motherland, indeed. Okay, so England is going after Cornwall this game. Last game, or I, I don't know which game it was, like, I think Macmillan was in charge and Cornwall was still here. Like, all of us. Like, like not just, like, the port of Plymouth. I think it's... Is it Thatcher? It is Thatcher. Good. Now, also, you know how modeling is like the um, the Lib Dem in th in um, Collaborator England. D there's been a massive whitewash of modeling's character in the New Order. Apparently, he was a fucking like he was corrupt as shit in our own timeline. Yeah, that I saw that. Apparently, it's one of the worst parts of the New Order is the massive whitewash of modeling. Anyway, what are you doing? You're doing these not the rest or something. Yeah, you are. What are you doing? Might go after me first. Surely. That's us. Fuck. Well, I suppose I can knock you out first. No problem. Uh, you probably have this core by now, don't you? You do. There we are. We'll put out those three divisions. Thank you. And we're short of what? Everything. Good God. Now, I mean, you go. And over you go, quick as you like. I don't suppose that's 21 days, is it? Probably not. More factories. Good. Go. Gotta go quick. They've got a lot of units. I'm, I'm guessing they have the uh, non Aryan military. They do. How many men do you have? A decent amount. Not decent enough, however. Not decent enough. Now let's quickly draw up a trash battle plan. Probably pop the uh, office staff office planning and uh, do that. I don't suppose you finished that focus and are now going after them. No, you haven't. Damn it. Reorg quickly. Well, at least they're not guarding any of this up here. We'll be able to come down on them nicely. Alright, here we go. Permhaim. Hmm. I think we'll wait until all this has been dealt with. Control the factories, thank you. Now I'm guessing by the fact that I'm not hearing the... Someone is justifying on a sound that you're going after... The Simps? You are! Fantastic, fantastic. Ah, glorious. Now, everyone keep doing their thing. Now. You... Can go over there. You can all attack this one guy. And as soon as you come down here, attack there. Good job. Actually, you can keep going down that way. No. We 
You're doing your thing there. You've taken Yellow Booga. Or whatever. Now, all of you, attack right here. Come down and we'll take Permaim. You're doing your thing, aren't you? Yes, you are good. You attack across the river. This is going to go nice and easy. Now, you can all attack there. Now, small mustache man Haim, take that. You go this way. Keep pushing. What happened there? South Africa surrendered territory. Hmm. So how does that look? Weird. Ugh. Very weird. Very weird indeed. Yeah. Hmm. Whatever. Pro, uh... What's it called? A pro Africa Shield ceasefire. Ooh, another factory. Thank you. Oh. Yes, you're taking Kunger. Or however it's uh, pronounced. Ah, fantastic! We got it all. And we also bypassed a focus. And Samara is uh, all the worse off for it. Now we need to be closing up a lot of this. Uh, hell yeah, we're, we're at 86. We don't even have to take any of those decisions, which is fantastic. Now do all that. And uh, leave that alone. Close that. Close that. And close that. Good. I'm sure you'll be coming for us soon. I can we get more men out? We can, fantastic. Four divisions, that'll be amazing. We currently have twelve. Ooh, seven? That's amazing, hell yeah. The AB must have had a lot of equipment. Of course they they took out Bashkuria and Berzniki and uh, Berzniki, so yeah, good for us. Now, absorb the tank fleet, 120 units of MBT and 250 units of IFE is at the national stockpile. But what, why is it our MBT that we're adding to the national stockpile? Wouldn't it be Gorky's MBT and IFE's? Anyway, whatever. The fleet of assembled tanks and support elements is considered by many of our journals to be the true prize of Nizhny Novgorod, a vast reserve of armoured power that can be deployed against our future foes. The bandits controlling the city before us at least had the foresight to hire competent personnel to arm them and keep the factories running. We will profit from this by extension and mobilise the motor pool of Nizhny Novgorod for the purpose of our state. Indeed. Aren't you going to go for us now? You are. And you got a, a like a you got a saved up time thingy as well, so that's bad. Hmm. I have an idea. Instead of spreading out, we don't have a whole lot of time to org up. What the hell is that? Just let, let me let me withdraw the front line. Now there we are. Good. Just do this. We don't have a whole lot of time, so we need to uh, get as much organization as possible. Well, and that'll give them uh, a lot of places to go. Oh, do your thing there. Um, we can we can bypass that, so that does not matter. I'm sure, this also uh, bypasses. Oh, it doesn't. Because we have Berezniki, I suppose. Yeah. Anyway, Purge Kazenbeck gained base stability plus 5%. It seems that our generous appraisal of the Madarasi was granted too soon. The Madarasi have resisted every attempt to negotiate and bring them in and bring them into the fold. After our occupation of Berezniki and comparatively light-handed treatment of their organization, Roland Kazenbeck and his highest officials shall be arrested and imprisoned with trials broadcast over radio. This will serve as a warning to the rest of, them of the Madarasi cease their organization against our regime or face the same fate. Fantastic. Practical Industrial Administration, thank you. Yes, we said we'd go down this route. I suppose those divisions can deploy it. No, not, not even close. Well, at least the border's nice and open. I wonder where all their troops are. And where are your troops? Not a decent amount. Not as many as us. Yeah, we've got 104,000 in the field. Whatever. 
advance. Like sharpish. Where's the uh high feed vision? Ah, you're down here, okay, that's fine. Now, who isn't advancing? You. Very important. Fine, just keep going. I know what you're doing. You need to uh, help this division. To come down to Samara. Kellen wins last time, that was fast. Ah, here's their army. You were pulsed? No, you weren't. Good. Which one's going to arrive sooner? I assume it's you, so do that thing. Only one of you needs to do that. Fine. Oh, they're all, they're all up here where it does not matter, seriously. Yeah, then do that or something. No. We have a lot of manpower, bloody hell. Try and take Simbirsk. You'll probably lose that. Oh no, you'll win. Good for you. Not bypassed, which is... Oh, never mind that. That was a steep declaration. That's fine. This is going to bypass, yes. And we'll all wait until... Um, I'll wait until we've defeated Samara, just in case uh, it changes. Now, more fa a lot more factories. Wow. Eight... Seven and nine and eight. There we are. Good. We're getting a decent amount of production. They're ridiculously low because we, um, something, no, 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 the, uh, production is bugged this game, which is very annoying. But it is what it is. And it is not really going to change anything. Well, it might. <laughs> it might change something. Not we lost that. Whatever. Ooh, you should sit right there. Oh, and you're gone. Now onto the border with Onega, and is uh, is Ursh still here? No, it's the Lib Dem guy. That's not we've been seeing him a bit um, a bit more often. Yeah. Hmm. Now repair all of this. What's this? Integrate yes, Tatarstan and Samara. Thank you. Now everyone up there, quick as you can. Now the second purification minus seven hundred and fifty manpower. <laughs> Where are you putting all the? Uh, where are you putting all the AV members, Gumilyov? Well, I mean, I'm not complaining. Not lag spike. Now, the AB claimed that they had purified the lands, removing the stain of the un of the thingies, uh, the below regulars, and instating a new order under their enlightened rule. This is, of course, mere delusion. The city of Parma, the lands around it, have been stripped bare of their character, and the peoples of the region have been abused and enslaved as the Aryans. We must, or by the Aryans, we must aid the region, liberating the people from their chains, prosecuting the leaders of the damned cult, and instilling, a, installing a completely new local administration. The, the the crimes which one must commit to be considered Aryan are clear telltale that none of the Brotherhood's members are to be trusted. Thankfully, now they will forever bear the mark of shame. And I, I can't even see what the reaction to that event is. Wow. And Bennett's here. Can we train up more units? We can. Good. How many more? Only 11 just for the cap, that's fine. We'll put some of them out now, in the rear. Ooh. That'll do. That'll do. Hell yeah. We only need five. 
and we'll need some artillery in reserve to um, to account for all the st all the artillery we'll lose when we shall be trading up, which is right now. I'll actually make you all become that as well. No. No garrisons, yes? Good. Oh yeah, the uh, anti-tank equipment. We still have enough of it, evidently. We have a lot of it, actually. Good. No. A shield broken. Hmm. I think we'll do cast down Bashkiria. Right, that's that. Now, a unitary Russia. Gets then the conversion of Bashkiria. Gain base stability plus 3%. The state of Bashkiria is once again within our grasp, and its armies have been routed before our superior firepower. All that is left to do now is to integrate the former Bashkiria as a new province within the new Russian state. The new administra uh, administrative units will be called Ufa Oblast. Hell yeah. Commission the best, have them swear oaths of loyalty. Nice. Um, a replacement of the administration shall follow with Russian language curriculum and instated and a census run to determine the exact population and demographic com uh, composition of the region. The mistakes of the past in dealing with the Bashkirs will not be repeated. I can't remember who it was that, that pointed it out, but it is annoying that we don't get Bunyachenko as a field marshal when we integrate the uh, the traitorous generals of Samara. Mm, I guess his own vision for Russia is too strong, but I like I don't really get the ideologue vibe from Bunyachenko. I just the only vibe I get is um, I'm sorry I was a collaborator. How much can I help Russia? I really I really wish we could get him as a uh, field marshal. But we do get Meandrov, indeed. Ah, uh, Granite, or nah, not Granitov, Meandrov is here. You know what that means. 3333, 4342. I mean, yeah. Anyway. The conversion of Bashkiria. No. Nice, we actually get to do that. Very nice. Now, bring that up. There we are. Nice. Repair, oh yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Repair all the factories first, of course. Especially these civilian ones. Now. The conversion of Bashkiria. Our efforts to secure Tartistan have begun in earnest. The roads are filled with trucks driving from village to village, tearing down the old Tartar flags and symbols and replacing them with our flag. All seems to be uh, well so far, but an, an, in that, but an issue has cropped up, the issue of religion. The Tartar people are Muslims and our soldiers are overwhelmingly not. This has led to much friction both in the region itself and at home. The three distinct wings have broken apart on the issue. Uh, the first pushes for immediate focus on converting the Tartars to Christianity. After all, they claim it is our duty as honest Christians to bring non-believers back into the fold. This would be costly and take much time to complete, but could be worth it in the end. The second wing pushes for simply crushing uh, Islam altogether, burning mosques, prosecuting imams, and destroying the religious presence in the area as a whole. This is a controversial idea, but would be easier than conversion, though the Tartars would certainly be unhappy. Yes, I'm sure they would be unhappy. That's, a word, that's uh, certainly a word for it. Now, finally, we have some, uh, finally, some have proposed simply leaving religion untouched, the simplest, easiest option, of course, with much of the right being religious themselves. This is a controversial position to take. In any case, we must act and act swiftly. We shall bring them to the light. Oh, no, I thought that'd be safe air of it, actually. Oh, there's no end. I, I feel like we shall bring them to the light of God should increase the influence of Sergei Tabritsky and uh, Shafe Erevich. Or maybe, or, yeah, we shall tear the apostates down would work as well for Shafe Erevich. Uh, I think I'll just increase, um... Sorov's influence. Sorov is, um... Oh, yeah, I have this close-up, don't I? Yeah, 45, I'm put, yeah. We shall tear the apostates down. Now, Russians in all but name gets bent casting down Tartar nationalism. This will slightly decrease coring time. The Tartars are conquered once more, and once more their separatist urges are defeated. What the region of Tartarstan truly needs is not autonomy or recognition, but rather a total integration. Kazan and the lands around it will be incorporated into our new state wholesale. There is to be no native autonomy, for why should there be? The Tartars are merely Russians that have lost their way. Their culture is merely a relic of their collective delusion. Oof. Now, drop a nice battle plan. We have a lot of manpower. We'll get even more once we uh, reunify the region. Which we uh, can't do yet because we have to solve our 
immediate political matters. Now, 25 pre-war fighters and 15. I, lo I love the, like, the disparity between um, our fighters and our cast. Like, our, our cast would serve immensely better as fighters. These are biplanes, and these are, like, in, in like base game Hoi Forward, that would be like cast 3. Like, it's insane. Now, Scour Samara. I don't think I've seen this event before, and if I have, it's been a long, very, very long time. Now, new industrial equipment, thank you. Casting down Tartar nationalism. Victor's truck slid to halt at the gate of the villages and his men uh, leapt from the back. In a moment, they stamped over to the gate, testing it. What they, when they found it was locked, a sharp burst from a PPSH split, split the lock apart and the soldiers marched in, followed by truck after truck. Victor watched as his men pulled the villagers from their homes, dragged them to the village square. Soldiers swept the dirt roads, looking for anyone foolish enough to hide or fight. If they hid, they'd catch an extra kick in the ribs before being dragged to the square. If they fought a sharp staccato fire, would be all they received. Actually, I have I've definitely read this before. Now, eventually, once Victor was satisfied with the number of citizens gathered, he left his truck and marched in front of the local mosque, surrounded by his soldier citizens. He began, from this day forth, you are no longer Tartars, you are Russians, you will speak Russian, you will read Russian, and you will discard your old culture immediately or face punishment. We shall personally see to it that not a single trace of this Tartar culture um, is shown in the in this region again. Is, is that understood? Before the crowd had a chance to respond, Victor waved his arm, and a hail of Molotov cocktails crashed through the mosque's windows and lit the floor on fire. A smoke began to rise behind him. Victor smiled. His job was complete. We are all Russians, like it or not. Political power minus 15. Surely a much more effective way of uh, russification would just be to split them up and just send them off to different corners of, uh, I nearly said the empire, of different corners of the, the state, and kind of just separate them and make sure that they're, they can't, like, speak the language with other members of, <coughs> oh, excuse me, with other members of the culture. Now, uh, yes, that's all fine. There we are. Now. Scour Samara. Gain based ability minus 7%. This will slightly decrease coring time. Samara is ours and with it we have secured miles upon miles of fruitful land, dozens of factories and arsenals overflowing with useful equipment. However, we have also inherited another less valuable thing. Traitors, sympathizers with the um, Russian Liberation Army and, their, and the Germans fill our newly occupied territory and their partisans continue to fight in our, our forces in many areas. The solution to this problem is simple. A grand crackdown on this treason and no mercy for any poor fool who, who dares carry on this cause of a dead traitor. Indeed. I guess Vlasov is dead. We'd, you don't really get an event for executing Vlasov. I, I, you, I, you definitely don't get it as Zhukov, I believe, because I played Zhukov. You might get it one as Tukhachevsky? I don't know. The only real execution event that I can remember for Western Russia is, like, apart from, like, the opposition in Komi, you def you usually get one for um, Vladimir the Third. Yeah. Now, ooh, I nearly missed that. That, that, that would have been bad. Now, indulge the monarchists. Gets the the governorship of Vyapka. Uh, despite the shameful state of Yatka and the treacherous nature of the false Tsar Vladimir, the ideology of monarchism is hardly discredited as a viable means of governing Russia. Sergei Tabritsky and his monarchist faction, while, while uh, quite divergent from the rest of our front, are influential nonetheless and advocate strongly for preserving and protecting the history of the Tsardom. To indulge Tabritsky and his followers, we could place several of his supporters in high administrative positions in the newly conquered territories of Yatka, with Tabritsky himself as the local governor. All well, this will most certainly allow him to gain power, influence and support amongst the people. Could be worth it to ensure that the holy traditions of Russia are preserved, protected, and rightfully revered. Indeed. Anything for some base stability. You know, I love base stability. Almost as much as I love infrastructure. Honestly, considering how much I love infrastructure, to wonder I haven't done a, a series as Drozdovsky in uh, Red Flood. Yeah, Red Flood. I knew he said Red World. No, that's a... Uh, that's, that's a different mod. Very different. Ooh, 17.4 million. Most of it's in the south, around Stavropol, Samara, Nizhny Novgorod, Kazan. That region is incredibly population rich. We'll get a lot more planes once we knock out Oneka. Until um, until we actually get into a conflict with Onega, though, we've actually got a bit to do. We've got to f um, read this event, finish that focus, we'll start it off there. And, uh, and then we'll have to go up here and start doing this stuff. Yeah. Not all of it, obviously. Now move the capital to Vyatka. 
Get to vent a new residence. Actually, not sure. Um, I need to read that event first. Here we are. Now, the governorship of Vyatka. Vyatka, uh, Vyatka, after a long struggle, is under our domain. Years of animosity between us and them have finally come to a head in a climactic struggle. One that, thankfully, we have won. However, the years of monarchist rule in the region has left, has less, have left, has left its culture decidedly. Uh, Zarist, near said Zarist. Something that part of our faction has decided to use their advantage. Tabaritsky's clique has begun a push to have him nominated as the Grand Duke of Vyatka. While there's no real harm done by granting him his request, outside of some extra legitimacy for his way of viewing things, some within our faction have pushed against this move, claiming it's merely a waste of time and tying ourselves to these Zarist days. The decision must be made. Yes. Appoint the most skilled and qualified candidate, Tabaritsky. Plus 5% based ability increases the influence of Sergei Tabaritsky and change the popularity of despotism 3%, and that'll put him at what? 27? Good lord. He's more popular than Shea Fairovich. <laughs> Good God. How is his actual thing doing? Oh, 21. Good. Good, good. I was going to say. I was worried. Very worried. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Now, move the capital to Vyatka. Get to vent a new residence. Our current capital, Ossasalsk, has great benefits. It is far from the front lines in a strategic location and has years and years of, of administrative framework dating from the days of the WRF and all the way to the dawn of the new state. However, another option exists, one that has been realized by the, the newly integrated region of Yatka. The city of Yatka itself would make an excellent new capital for our state, hosting all of the ministries and infrastructure that were used by the Tsar to manage his realm. It lies in a central location with a large and fairly loyal population. I mean, we've just annexed them recently. I doubt that. And is, on, is, and is on a much more conveniently located river for ease of transportation. To move the government is a daunting task, uh, is a daunting task, and some may say impractical at this point. But with our state's newfound strength, it can be, it can be surely, it can surely be realised easily. Yes. Now, this is nothing to do with. Um, Safe air of it, so I shall just say, yeah, none were staying here. Art time smiled, gain based ability plus 5%. Good. Now, strengthen the passionary, gain based confidence support plus 10%, increase the influence of Gumilyov and Shafarevich. Now, th what's this? Raiding or loot or something? Loot, nice. Close the loop again. Now that the Passionary is in power, the outside elements have outlived their usefulness and only serve to hold us back from our true vision, let us cut the dead flesh away so that the living core may grow stronger. Indeed, room to grow. Not for Gumilyov, though. No, 25%, 23, 22, 27. <laughs> Stabritsky is the most popular part of the, um, of the Passionary, followed by... Yeah, followed by Gumilyov, followed by Sarov, followed by Shafe Ervich. Somehow Shafe Ervich is, like, down in popularity. 277,000 50 factories are very nice. Yeah, I do not know what's wrong with our production in, um, in this game. Uh, yeah. There certainly will not be any tanks in this run. Yeah, but then again, if there's no tanks, how are we going to beat Germany? Hmm. Like, look at this. 13 factories in 5 a day. Coming on their own. Maybe I should do a... Um... Or would that delete the save? Hmm. Clear the cache, maybe? I might delete the save, though. Don't have to read. Then again, I, I would have time, wouldn't I? Hmm. Might not be a bad idea. Now, depend on the moderates. Oh, should I have to replay Magadan as well? Yeah. Nah. Increase it now. Depend on the moderates. Increase the influence of Augur Shea Fairvich. Change the popularity of Bundle of Sticks is in 3%. Most of our popular support is centered on the moderate wing of our alliance, led by Augur Shea Fairvich. His promises to respect the Republic while reaffirming our national traditions is what sanitized our party to voters beyond the hardcore of our constituencies, adopting his gradualist... Adopting his gradualist uh, approach and national democratic ideal will maintain support and stability while we implement our ideals, indeed. On the five divisions, thank you very much. I'm sure Meandrov will be pleased. How much artillery do we have? Not a whole lot, I bet. We have a deficit. Oh, no, no. That's because of this. Yes. How much do we have now? Still short 245. That is so bad. <sighs> Making barely any of it. That's a problem. Now, compassionate reformism gets a reformist agenda. As the people must serve the state, so must the state serve the people. Our commitment to uphold strict moral values give us a strong foundation from which to build such a state. Now it's time to build on that foundation. We must ensure our people are warm and safe. We must feed their bellies and their thirst for purpose. We must not think of them or think of the work as easy or for ourselves as infallible or, or of ourselves as infallible. Um, 
but work gradually and learn from our mistakes. Our values will be the foundation. Each successive reform will be a brick, and soon we will have built a grand structure to house all of the Republic. Very good. Oh damn. Going after the free aviators, eh? Now. A reformist agenda, the 21 points. Oh, say fit. What? Why? Why do you have a 21 point plan, Jay Fairwich? Okay, first of all, you're only half of a bundle of sticks person. So if you're going to be copying anyone, it should be the original bundle of sticks, not the Hackenkreuzers in Germania. Why do a 21 point plan, for the love of God? Is the newest publication of Wagner Jay Fairwich, and it's spreading rapidly around Ossesalsk, a manifesto stating his beliefs in a compassionate Russian state where the voices of the people are heard and the traditions of the past are kept dominant. Though some have critiqued the manifesto as nationalist to an extreme, the calls for focusing on morality in a republic where little seems to exist, pledging to bring about national democracy, and his promises of compassion have appealed to many who have read the manifesto. Several Russians have called it hopeful, though many of the native people of Komi are nervous about the 21 point specification of Russians. Some of his critics called him anti small hat. However, despite the, decis or the, the divisiveness of the publication's author, many sales of the publication have occurred. Certainly an odd read. Plus 15 political power to increase the influence of Shafarevich and change the popularity of Bundle of Sticks to 2%. I don't think there's ever been a better person that ever fit the description, to ever to fit the description of national conservative. I think Shafarevich is like the ultimate guy, yeah. Now an experimental dream gains a dream for Russia which grants daily political power gain minus 0 0.05 and production efficiency cap plus 10% for 180 days. Our duty to restore our country to greatness will never be done and dogmatic adherence to past decisions will only hinder us, hinder us in our work. While there is a time and a place for spectacular action, it is through the many small successes of our day-to-day -day struggle that we will realize our dreams for tomorrow. We will be pragmatic in how we rule the public, we will be practical in our day-to-day -day rule, and we will apply the lessons learned from past failures, both our own and those of others, as long as we remain true to our ethos of compassionate conservatism and informed by the ancient traditions of our nation, we can afford to experiment with policy, indeed. And that's not too bad. Then again, we only have, like, yeah... We we have two hundred eighteen thousand. That's not that. That's not that bad. Yeah. Hmm. Then yeah, as we get more and more of these bonuses, that'll help get that'll get the uh, efficiency up. Good enough. Now, a focus. Uh, no, adapt the constitution. Yes. Now, get cement a new constitution. In order to strengthen our whole Ancomi and guide it to a better future, we should draft a new constitution. This will mark a break with the corrupt old order and let us show the people our good intentions that the drafting process will show us where the prominent voices in our organization land on key issues and who in our organization commands the influence to push their favorite clauses through is just an added benefit, of course, indeed. Vertical industrial organization. That should help getting the efficiency up and thus more... Um, ooh, we're getting 12.5% there. Very, very nice. Now get more of this stuff. Let's see how much it'll go up. We're currently at about 10.54. So let's see what happens. Now. A new constitution, question mark. Within the shadow of midnight, Lev Gumilyov did not sleep. Instead, while the people snapped and the gears turned, he waited for the others. While there were many more public meetings to come, the first discussion on the new constitution was here, private, secure, and away from prying eyes. Shefarevich was the first to arrive with a polite grin on his face as he passed into the room like a peacock, strolling with an elegant yet leisurely gait. Gumilyov nearly rolled his eyes at the display, for there were no crowds at this hour for him to woo with his honeyed words and silver tongue. Uh, sil and silver tongue. Greetings were exchanged, then patience. Next came Sorov, entering slowly and intently as his eyes swept across the room. Thank you. 10.54, uh, now we're at... 15.33, that is, that is good. Okay. I don't know if that just fixed it. But that's really good. I think we, okay. If that doubles to four, or something like that, maybe even five, and that kind of, that's not, that's already more than half. We sh okay, we should be alright. We should be a-okay. Let me get the efficiency up. Yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. And we'll, and we'll get more factories. Now, guess uh, this stuff? Yeah, get that stuff. Or no, no, no. Now, now that we've practically united, we need to be doing the research thingies now. Um, as his eyes swept across the room like a wolf eyeing the landscape or its next meal, ambition was something all of the guests had, but the former leftists had history they, they, they did not. Finally, the final guest slithered and silently, his eyes slit and his smile unnervingly fixed. A reaction Sergei Tabaritsky commonly got from those he spoke to was befuddlement at best, terror at worst. All of his guests would have a say in the paper resting between the four men to garner legitimacy for their new state, and all of his guests eyed the, his position of power eagerly. All would have to be dealt with, but who to marginalize first? Iger's wings need to be clipped, Ivan's leash needs to be tightened. I mean, hating on Sarov is always a, a short bet. Yeah. 
Shortgate's fangs need to be removed, indeed. Decrease the influence of Tabritsky, change the popularity of despotism minus 1%, and get cement the matter of economic structure. Ah, most of the stuff is repaired now. Good. Alright, the matter of economic structure. A crucial facet of any state is the structure of the economy, and our constitution needs to lay out how we will approach ours. The breadth of thought in our alliance means there are many competing ideas for how to address this. There is a general agreement that the government needs to be in control of several important sectors in the economy, but beyond that there is little common ground to be found. A large faction contend that we must... Um, allow market forces to operate in non-strategic spheres of the economy. They say private enterprises will... Um, will complement their state-run counterparts to provide greater welfare for all. The best way to achieve both would be to provision for private property rights in our constitution while also specifying that it can be overruled on, under what conditions. There are many, however, who can believe who believe we can only realise our plans under a total command economy. Everything in the Republic belongs to the whole nation and is only right that the nation be empowered to mobilise every farmer, worker and clerk to achieve its aims. Private businesses will always, by their very nature, undermine this aim. The constitution should, according to this faction, define all property as belonging to the state. Tabaritsky's faction a, a, advocates a third approach. They say that it is these modern economic theories and structures that got Russia to the sorry state. We must cast away these foreign theories and look back to the heyday of Russia. The traditional way of life is what will restore Russia to greatness, and that starts with the economy. The constitution must empower the state to take any measures necessary to return Russians to where they belong. So what? Do you want estates again? Is that what you want? Hmm. Anyway, to allow private property. This, it will increase the influence of Igor Seferovich, change the popularity of bundle of sticks in 1%, and get cement the matter of civil structure. Now, means to an end. Seferovich poured himself another drink. Kamilyov erased another line he didn't like. Tabaritsky um, accidentally tore a, another clump of hair from his scalp. Each of the men sat in their own homes, dwelling on thoughts of the past and the future as they shamelessly tried to throw themselves into projects to distract from or alleviate these. Uh, Seferovich knew how he had to both make some sacrifices and some compromises to get where he was at the cost of power. Yet, as he sat the bottle down, he couldn't help but worry. He felt what he was doing was for the good of Russia. He swore to himself, and yet he felt himself drifting further from his principles as he climbed into the echelons of the party. But damn, was it a long climb. Now, what's this? More, more loot? Good. I was hoping we could get another societal development before we unify now. Gmiliev, as he always did, was polishing one of his rough theories, scribbling on an old sheet of paper at his desk. The time was coming when these would, uh, would be fact. Now we'll move that away. Um, and he had worked hard to hear uh, to near that occasion. He didn't have the same way with words as his father, the poor bastard, but he was having an easy time getting... Uh, he was, he was having an easy enough time getting an idea out. Shame they wouldn't stay on the page as he, as he scratched out each halfway decent sentence he wrote. Determination and, for lack of a better term, passion had brought him to this uh, point, but as evidenced by his writer's block, would it bring him any further than this? Tabritsky, meanwhile, was on a roll. Um, the wild passion had brought Gumilyev to the top, and Shevervich had planned his way there. Tabritsky rose in a frenzy. Uh, that was his constant state. He had to be planning, moving, seething. Thus, while the rest of those in, in, the, in the household were asleep, he was tearing through maps ranging from 1600 all the way to 1962. Most of them were wrong, but he continued to look through them one after the other over and over in search of the true monarch of Russia that was his goal after all to rebuild to grow Russia like him was a controlled frenzy why would you be looking at maps from 1600 like I don't know what year Zarevich Alexei was born but oh but it was not uh, any time before I want to say the 1900s now tearing shouting cutting whatever gets you there plus 10% base stability thank you now of course and as we get our stability up as well we'll get a lot more um, factory output hell yeah there's uh, roughly 27% factory output to be made not bad at all now the matter of civil structure. With more, with power more secured, new options for the future of our state having have come to the table as the constitution begins its drafting. One such debate has finally come into view of our leadership, the role of the central government in relation to various regions. Tabaritsky, of course, proposes that regional administrations hold no power, nor did the central government would rule with an iron fist. Say Fairvich instead proposes a lighter alternative, federalism, leaving some power in the hands of regional administrations, while, while the central government still rules strongly. Lastly, Gumilyov fights strongly for self-determination among the regions, instead forming a sort of confederacy. Tensions increase... But ultimately, one side wins the day. How, like, how would you implement a a planned total command economy in in a confederation? That's just weird to me. And yeah, it's very weird. Now, um, yes, Shevchenko decreases the influence of um, Sergei Tabritsky, change the popularity of despotism minus one percent, increases the influence of Shevchenko, change the popularity of bundle of sticks is in one percent. Good. I don't think we've got to read that event. No. The convention. 
To an outside observer, the great convention of the Pashtunari organization must be a decidedly ad uh, uh, odd spectacle. The effort to get a big tent party and comprising social conservatives, radical Eurasianists, traditional monarchists, and everything in between to agree on a shared doctrine is proven to be a challenge. So challenging, in fact, that, a, that an alternative proposal for uniting the party is quickly becoming the preferred option called the Convergence. It consists of a vote to be held at the end of, of the Assembly to determine the leader of the organization and the new head of state. Now the final words gets into the last word. The convergence looms. Lines are being drawn ever more firmly as the primary leadership candidates make their last uh, appeals to the voting membership. There are more debates to be had. No more backroom deals to be made. Uh, the four men will each make a final speech and then the decision. The only other question is to be decided is who will be the last one to speak last. Is, is, um, is who will be the one to speak last. It's the most desired position in the order of speeches by all four candidates. And whoever secures it will have gained both the prestige of a small victory and the perceived benefit of having the last word before the vote. Who will it be? I wonder. Like, I think I uh, mentioned this kind of concept a while ago, but um, like instead of the, well, you should probably be able to enable it or disable it in the um in the game settings. But having like events like these where you can just pick who you want is kind of eh. Like it's kind of be based on like say the pie chart, or say like um like there's a twenty five percent chance of community of having the last word or something like that. That'd be cool. I'd like that. No. Oh. Convergence. The last word, there was a certain melancholy at the Knights National Assembly. Officials shuffled into their seats, staff made their last preparations, and even the mice in the wall sat silent. It was the last one before a true leader of Comey and later Russia at large would be empowered, with most of the men in the room stubbornly decided on who they supported. Uh, some still stood in the middle. Thus, while others dozed and waiting for another speech to ignore or affirm their beliefs, some sat on the edge of their seats. They waited for someone to take the stage, and take the stage they did. A man quickly approached the podium to give the last speech, but who? Gumilyov, Shefervich, Sravo, Tabritsky. Shefervich increased the influence of Shefervich and changed the popularity of bundled up 6 and 2%. I'm pretty sure he's the biggest party. He's the biggest one by now. Oh, yeah. 24, 20, 21, 31. Hell yeah, the RNP. Now, Convergence, the will to power belongs to those with the strength to seize it. The final speeches have been held and it is time for the Convergence to take place. Four men will enter uh, the National Assembly as candidates, each hoping to emerge from the vote as president, ready to guide the passionary to achieve their vision. Only one will succeed, while with everything now at stake, tensions are running high. The candidates have all committed to respect the Assembly, but it's anyone's guess how long that respect goes, should the tide turn against them. Indeed. West Siberia takes so bloody long to, uh, what in the name of God? Ah. Uh, what are you after doing? You're after sabotaging Magadan is what you're after doing. You've got no men. What the fuck? You must have pulled off some encirclement or some shit. Good lord. Uh, tag. Ammo. There we are. And uh, to make up for Magadan's last time, once, I'm, once I've dealt with uh, Siberia, I'll just annex them for them. Because that's just insane. I assume you've kind of done all your folk street by now? Yeah. Fuck's sake. Now... Just, um, I, I would say you're a cam, but I don't want to accidentally annex another nation. KMC. Ooh, that could have been dangerous. Now, annex KMC. There we are. Now we'll tag over to Magadan. We'll annex you. Bloody, I knew something like that would happen eventually, where Kamchaka would pull off some encirclement maneuver. And it, but they'd eliminated all of their troops. They, it must have been a big encirclement. Now, annex Homo. There we are. Do your thing. Tag, uh, what are you again? What, 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 what are you? What am I? Uh, Nick. Yes, that's it. To be honest, I only saw that because I still had the TD book enabled. I forgot about it. Why Siberia takes so long to unify? Go Kamchatka, though. Oh, TD book. And they're all trained up good. Hopefully we'll be able to secure the Southern Urals. I really don't want to lose them to uh, Omsk. Yeah. We need troops more than ever in this series, that's for sure. There's Magadan. We'll be seeing that event, uh, hopefully today, actually. Now, new agricultural methods. Thank you. Alright, let's see what it is. The meeting begins. The final struggle over Comey's future took place when it, where so many battles had happened before. Or beforehand, the National Assembly. First came Gumilyov, surrounded by guards, he and his representatives taking their seats in the center of the Assembly. Next came Shefervich, his men surrounding him as dutifully as Gumilyov's. They took their place to the left of the Assembly. There was a short delay before Sarov, his men clad in Soviet uniforms with the stars ripped off, stepped through the doors. They took their spot in between Gumilyov and Shefervich, and the venom began to spit between the factions, verbal tussles, insults, angry whispers. Finally, Tabritsky and his men filed in, taking their seats on the right of the Assembly for a floor. 
The stage was set for a political explosion of biblical proportions. The only thing to do now is to give the speeches take over and wait for the pieces to fall. The fate of the nation rests on shaky ground. Now, the vote. It was here. Hours of yelling of politicians stomping their feet, of passionate speeches and angry rebuttals. A fistfight had even broken out once or twice. After a long, arduous journey, the men and women of the National Assembly rose to cast their votes on who should lead Comey into the future. Kumilyov didn't show it, but his heart pounded against his ribcage as the silence grew. A truck was waiting outside and in the unlikely case he lost and he did not expect to lose. If he won, the plans to dispose of Tabaretsky and Sarov were clear in his mind to be executed almost immediately before they could escape. Shafirovich was a different story, but he would get around to him soon enough. Shafirovich hid his face behind his papers to hide his growing fear. Plans swirled around through his head, mixing and mashing, an escape plan here, an execution plan there. Whichever one he would need to implement, he was certainly ready. Sarov's ice-cold face didn't betray a hint of nervousness. His mind had filed, had, uh, filled with uh, plans, plans to leave, plans to say. He would win or he would leave, and he suspected the rest of the room felt the same way, as much as they tried to hide their emotions. Tabritsky drummed his fingers against the table. Could he do it? Could he win? If not, then what then? Um, he hadn't thought that part of this all the way through. His half-formed plan ended at leaving the city in the car as quickly as possible. Whatever he did after this vote, he knew it would decide his fate. As the votes were counted, the tension increased. As it was about to burst, a man stepped up to the podium and began to read. The winner is Shafarevich Triumphant. Could you, imagine if it's, could you imagine if it said something else? I'd die of shame. Now, um, do we need to be at peace for all these? We do. That's such a stupid... Oh, that's so... Ugh, hate it. Now, Shafarevich triumph. The Assembly had expected two outcomes to the meeting. The expected outcome was that Gumilyov would enter as head of state and emerge as head of state. After all, uh, was he not the driving force of the right? The underdog story was Igor Shafarevich, the compassionate conservative as he, as he styled himself. Shafarevich had been the young face of the passionary as, and had expected to have a long career in front of him. Of course, events changed all that and suddenly Shafarevich found himself not a second in command to one faction amongst many, but, but second in the leaders of Komi. This was not a position he particularly wanted, and a split from Gumilyov's wing drew much attention. Most analysts agreed, however, Shafarevich had made his move too early. His bid for power would come up short, and then he'd surely be in for it. When the vote count was finished, and Shafarevich was named the new head of state, the National Assembly fluttered with confusion and mild surprise. It was nowhere near the shock of what would have happened from a Sarov or Tabritsky victory, but it was enough to surprise many. As the men and women of the Assembly filed out, Shafarevich took a moment to savour his victory soon. He could really get to work. You see, the problem with these events, right... Is that, like, with the Pashnara, you can flip to either Sarov or Tabritsky if you don't want to play Gumilyov. But when you're reading the event, it'll still act like Gumilyov is in power. Which is weird. Now, an unexpected outcome. RNP becomes the ruling party. What will we get? Uh, bundle of sixism all the way through. Economy minister. Ah, oh, he's terrible. He's terrible. What's our current economy minister? Yeah, we're going to lose factory output. That's bad. Mm, not great all around. Uh, the the uh, security minister isn't bad. Yeah. What are we going to go from, though? 18 to... Probably going to take a little uh, moment to change. Now. It was 18, now it's 16. Oof. Now, form the Western Russian Free Republic. I'd prefer if it was the West Russian Free Republic or the Free Republic of Western Russia. Now, we were in control of all major cities in Western Russia. Those who said our nation was nothing but a poor joke now I've forgotten left behind the path of our ascent. Let us continue towards, uh, let us continue onwards toward the, to, let us continue onwards to the full liberation of the motherland and claim our true status as the one true Russian government. Good. And we'll get a new focus tree once we've knocked out Onega. But of course, we need to do the rest of the focus tree first. Because if we knock out Onega, we're going we're gonna to lose access to all of that. Because we'll get the new folk street immediately. Ah, <laughs> there he is. Ustus Assault. I'm pretty sure like that's the photo that's been used for literally all three of his events that, that we've gotten so far. Now, new focus slot. What do we do with that? This maybe? Yeah. Now. Ah, yes. Finished negotiations? No. Because they never accept. It's just a waste of time. Now, propaganda programs. Uh, ret why did that happen? I don't know. Returning. Oh yeah, because the uh, over uh, extended administration. Yeah, pop all of that. Get that up. And we'll get higher foreign instructors, mechanization, poverty programs, heavy machinery, education funding. Oh look, we're out of political power. Oh no. Uh, scientific research, worker training, construction, military industrial development, and consolidate state resource corporations. Uh, what's the rest of that from? Don't need uh, that. 
And we'll now PP minus 147. How much are we getting a day? 0.3 by that star. Now, that's just the Omega thing, that's fine. Now, us to Salsk re uh, unifies West Russia for the first time in a long while. Definitive and confirmed news on the happenings in West Russia have reached the ears of the rest of the world. Uh, yesterday, Igor Shefairovich gave a speech. Um, gave a speech as the leader of the new West Russian state that is not socialist or democratic but fiercely nationalist. During the speech, he announced the, his ambitions to reclaim um, the rest of Russia from tyrants and unite it. Uh, yet again, Igor Shefirovich is a member of the Pashnari organization, a party formed in the fledgling Komi Republic years ago. The mathematician held far right political views, uh, close to those of Lev Gumilyov, an ally of his, and so joined them before becoming the face of the right, a compassionate and allegedly moral human. Human? <laughs> Do you mean man? With the ascension of, I swear an alien wrote this, with the ascension of uh, his faction to power, us assaults quickly expanded and it seems it, um, as if they will not merely stop at the Urals from a Komi Republic, a Russian nation is born. Indeed. Now, Restoration Day. This will slightly decrease coring time, gain base stability plus 10%. We need it. Uh, today, the most momentous occasion in the history of our new state has arrived the day of the reunification of the territories west of the Urals. Through our labour, blood, and diplomatic efforts, all of West Russia has finally come under the control of our new state. Our vast lands extend from Arkhangelsk to Samara, with a loyal and proud population million strong. For this achievement, the end of worldism and uh, redism in our lands, a national holiday should be declared, and parades held in all of our major cities. To date, uh, truly, today is the first step in the rise of a new proud Russia. It is the day of the beginning of the end of the enemies of the motherland. What have we got? Ultra-nationalists, sock dems, and bundle of sticks people. Good. I mean, I'm going to enjoy meeting uh, Matkovsky. I'll have to make sure you... Oh no, you're still doing that stuff, that's fine. I'll, I'll have to keep an eye on you, make sure Petla doesn't take over. That would be... not ideal. Now... What will I go with this one? Yes, finalise the industrial policy. Our industrial expertise uh, will begin to rapidly improve. Our industrial equipment will begin to slowly improve. Two 100% research bonuses for industry. The industrial base of Russia has developed since the West Russian conflict, despite Bukharin's disastrous policies. However, it is not developed in a sane or consistent manner. Various warlord states' grandiose industrial visions have been carried out in clashing, contradictory ways, with redundant supply chains and technologies intended to make use of, the, of domestic resources. One of the most critical economic issues we face is binding all of our regional economies together, making use of the enhanced economies of scale, and working to ensure that functional and efficient logistics networks are operational. Now, Magadan. I'm still doing that, that's fine. I'll be tagging over to you immediately to make sure you take, to make the right decisions. You should be good now. And you're going straight for the army. Fine by me. By the way, tag mag. Now, what are you doing? You haven't been doing anything, I imagine. Do you have some sort of uh, decisions regarding Petlin and the old guard? I mean, you definitely do. I just uh, think you have to go down this stuff first. Uh, Nick. Here we are. Oh. Now. Nah. 431,000 men in reserve. Very nice. Finalize the industrial policy. Our industrial expertise will begin to rapidly improve. Our industrial equipment will begin to slowly improve to 100% research bonuses for industry. That's really good. The industrial base of... Oh, no, I read that. Good, but I don't think I read the, the top bit. That's good, though. I'm going to spend those bonuses on probably 1965 tech for the, the right most uh, industry tree. Uh, yeah, this stuff. I'll use it there, and I'll use it here. I'll make good use of it. Thank you. Now... Uh, further infrastructure development. Thank you. We'll get two pieces of infrastructure in Yurlinsky, Vologda, ooh, uh, Nizhny Novgorod, and uh, Zaryovokoshevsk. 
Expanding on our logistical ambitions, another issue that we must face is our lack of coherent centralized rail or road systems. While warlord states did indeed build roads, they were often insular limited, not connected to roads and other fiefdoms. An understandable priority, but one that we mostly that we must rectify. Uh, most, right? Yeah, must. New bridges must be built over rivers that once formed borders between warring states. Collapsed tunnels must be re-excavated and miles upon miles of road and rail must be laid. To build the new ties that bind us together as a true nation rather than a mere collection of smaller states, indeed. Now, factory split. You can just put into this. Thank you. Now, put that uh, in here. I think I'll, have, yeah, I'll have to keep a close eye on you and what you do. I'll have to keep a closer eye on you than I will myself. Because if you go petlin, that kind of ruins it. And seeing as how you were the only, you were the single nation that we can unite with, as Shea Fairvich, it shouldn't be, but it is, um, that I really do want to do so. Plus, that will really help me with the fact that my industry is fucked. I don't know what the hell is going on with the production. The, the industry is fine, it's the production that's going weird. Good, you're doing more military stuff. Keep, keep it up. Now. Still repairing, damn. You all good here? Yeah, we're all good. Nice. 8 billion deficit, yikes. Oh, we've got a lot of administrative stuff here. Oh, thank you. Is this 21 days? Oh, we've got two more to do. Damn it. I thought we would only have one. Now, gain uh, base conflict support plus 10%. Change the popularity of bundle of sticks and 10%. Our academic base will begin to improve. Most importantly of all, our reforms to the new Russian state, the people's morale and political will must be revived for too long. Warlord conflict. Ooh, we desperately needed that. Fantastic. 10%. What do we go from? 25 to 30. Very nice. Now, for too long, warlord conflict, bombings, and starvation has eroded the shared identity of the Russian people and eaten at the Russian patriotism within the hearts of the populace. A, pr a patriotic curriculum in schools must be established, focusing on our shared Russian uh, uh, identity. At long last, our people shall once more be revitalized and their hearts shall beat with pride for our new state. Indeed. Sports rivalry. That's funny. I really thought we'd get cracking into the... Um, the regional focus tree of this game, but no. Like, the whole kind of Comey thing, where you have to do this uh, tree as well as, um, yeah, not great. You could nearly cut that entire tree out if you just uh, enabled the ability for save favorites to um, coup, but of course that is kind of being enabled in um, toolbox theory. Not the coup part, just for him to come to power. You can uh, get him elected, which is good. Oh, light spike. There we are. What's that? Why is one of them enabled? I never picked that. So why is that back? Or did I? I didn't mean to do that. I don't like that decision. Not that bad, actually. Yeah, the minus 10% consumer goods is actually really good. It's the stability here that I don't like. Now, 21 days, yes. Armour experience plus 25 to 100% research bonuses for land doctrine lesson from the unification conflicts. The enemies we faced in the reunification conflicts to restore West Russia were varied in their tactics, ideologies and equipment from the deep battle of the Reds to the maneuver warfare of the ROA. We have faced every doctrine that could be thrown against us and we have emerged victorious. However, this does not mean we should grow complicit. There is always more to learn from our defeated foes and um, integrating techniques and tactics from past enemies could help us refine our formal strategies even further. Uh, the general who does not adapt to change the paradigms after all is doomed to fail to a general that does indeed. Now, 14 days for the invasion, I believe. 14 days, yes, indeed. Good. We'll have the entire focus read done. As soon as we knock out Onega, we'll get a new one. What kind of barrage will we be uh, unleashing upon the Finns and the Onegans? 2,300 guns. That is not bad at all. Not bad at all. Of course, we'll also be getting Onega's general staff. We unfortunately did not get Vologda's general staff. Uh, yeah, that was unfortunate, because I annexed them instead of defeating them, I imagine. But we still have an absolute wealth of generals. Not great ones, mind you, just mostly twos and threes, which is really annoying. And I believe that there is a level three panzer general 
in um, in Valand as well. Very annoying. I don't think we actually have any tank generals. Not that, not that it would matter, because we don't have the industry for that. <laughs> There's Tarasov again, but I swear he looks much different than the last time I saw him. Oh, that was the Far East. There's another guy called Tarasov. Yeah, that's it. Now, get the Air Force up. Uh, click, click, click. Uh, do not there. Yeah. There we are, good man. I never want to hit that head-on, because that's a level 6 fort. So we'll just get you going there, you and you going there, and you can go there. Now, off you go. Oh, you better win. If you don't want to be sad. This is good, yeah, this be good enough. Oh, you all advantage. Good. This will save me a lot of casualties. Fantastic. Is that the fins already? Good lord. Or does Karagopal have to fall as well? Damn it, I didn't know that. I just kind of assumed it was Omega. Did you want to stop attacking? Why did you do that? That's weird. Attack. I suppose this means we can kind of cut them off up here in the north. Yeah, keep going. We're moving for Tegra. Damn it. We might get in circle with that. We'll be fine. Let them go on. Aha, good. Ah, the Finns have three divisions here. Sucks to suck. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I don't want to leave the episode off um, while we're halfway stuck through a conflict, or stuck halfway through a conflict, so let's knock out the fins and we shall wrap it up there. Good place to leave off the episode now. God, they got their forces in fast. We knocked him out quick too. Must have had him there already. Usually they don't—they don't, they don't uh, station troops there. Very odd. Also, we'll put some of oh, we'll put all of Onega's aircraft into our own air force so that we can um, guess uh, even more air dominance. Now, what have they got? We got a decent amount. Octan Samara has a lot as well. I noticed that we didn't get any of the Atka's aircraft. I don't believe we did. Very annoying. You all doing your thing? You are. Really? Eight of you? Seriously? No, all, all, all eight of you can just stop that, whatever it is you're doing. Three divisions in circle is not bad at all, especially since it's before we actually get to um, the main battle lines. Another glorious lag spike. No. Get going. Boots that river. Let's go. They managed to hold us on the river. Well, they won't be able to hold us on the river because it's the AI. We pop those boosts. They're always essential. We short of anything? No. Because we're not importing any rubber, that's why. Now integrate an egg. We still have a new focus tree, yes? Yes, we do. Good. I often forget about the new folk tree by the um, because I'm at, in because I'm in a conflict with Finland. Now, compassionate conservative, uh, compassionate conservatives and political purpose set plus seventy five gets event a brief interview. For the past five decades of Russian history, the nation has undergone sweeping changes. First came the empire, which vacillated between an autocracy and a constitutional monarchy. Then the republic came into being, which failed to compromise between the ideals of the founders. Finally, in our lifetimes, the union and how it has failed. The nation lay shattered. All oh, the brigadiers are here. Hmm. Also, yeah, just that uh, kind of cro uh, cross. Yeah, come in. No. Uh, where was I? The nation they sat in, the unity between the Russian people was subsumed under the uh, subordination by the elite. Um, was subsumed under the subordination by the elite. Now that he has come to power in the Republic of Ossetia, President Shevchenko has ideas as to how to revive and rejuvenate Russia. Key to his plans is his ideology, that of compassionate conservatism. No longer shall the peoples of Russia be driven against one another by difference in, ide in ideals and class. All shall be one as God has intended. Um, had intended. Uh, no longer shall the people rage against their ideals, their pillars of culture, but belong in harmony with the state and the nation. Under the present, a new Russian dawn shall rise, and the failures of the past will be, shall be erased in its light. I mean, is that not glorious? It is. It is indeed. Now, you're not doing... 
peddling stuff, are you? No, you're doing mostly military stuff. That's that's good. That gives me uh, that, gives, that buys me time to concentrate on this. Now, everyone cross the river. Yes, move. You're in a juicy position. Or you're in a position for a juicy encirclement. Off you go. <laughs> no, go away from them. Not gonna anything. Well, it's like we're not gonna get too much. Two divisions. That's not great. Ah, here we are. Mission the best. Have them swear oaths of loyalty. Let's uh, let's actually see who's new. Who will be new, rather? All right. And look at the faces. Who's the best? Let's see what we get. Any, any level fours? Now, who's new? Who can I pick out as being new? I think you might be new. I think those two field marshals are new. Not bad, not bad. But again, mostly twos and threes. Unfortunate. Now, come down to Vilpuri and on to Helsinki. It's kind of one division do it. The others can just, you know, do your thing. Just do whatever, you know. Doesn't need to be three people doing it. Thank you. Now. Mm, which one should we go for first? Which one is which one is more beneficial for us? That's good. That's really good action. Is this one of those where we have to do the political tree? No, it isn't. Wow. I think we'll go with this tree on the left. Yeah. National democracy. Now, a brief interview. Welcome, Igor Rastislavovich. Thank you for coming to our show. My pleasure, Sergei. Now, if I may jump straight to the point uh, that, seemed, that everyone seems concerned about, some politicians have called you a bundle of stick, citing some of your rhetoric. What do you think? Well, Sergei, I admit that I may on occasion be overzealous in my pursuit of, uh, re of restoring Russia's glories. Uh, I like to think that, that my rhetoric is, in fact, simply the product of me caring too much about the well being of the nation. Oh, but what about allegations that claim you employ criminal activities in destabilizing opposition? I assure every listener that this is not true. I'm a man of the law, a compassionate conservative. My campaign tactics revolve around appealing to the human spirit, to the past and to the present. To, um, the future requires a lot from us, and I simply do not believe that the Liberal Party is to be capable of being able to guarantee prosperity. Those who do not believe me look at Germany, they are a bundle of sticks. No. Well, yes, they are. Um, but I do not advocate for racial purity, nor do I foam at the mouth, uh, at the mouth over revanchism. No, you do not. Then all is well. Refuse. Then all is well. Good. Uh, can you kind of come in and do your... Yeah, good. Just clean that up. Otherwise, they'll all be coming around here trying to garrison that. And they should instead be advancing. I don't like that. Cross it. Oh, good, you're doing it anyway. Nice. But yeah, I don't like that either. Cross that. Nice vertical, vertical industrial um, organization, too. Now it gets vertical, vertical industrial organization, three. This is all decreasing the cap, which means that the growth doesn't matter because we've already reached it. That's annoying. Now, national. Oh. Damn. Yeah, you you, uh, you two come down here. I think you're both moving in here, aren't you? No. Good. Should be getting a peace uh, offer soon. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Yeah, you're 73% uh, of the way there. Ooh, no, do not do that. Don't. Stop, stop. stop. Just, yeah, stop doing that. Kubitschek is here, interesting. Ah, good. Oh, I, was, I was worried. Now, oh, try doing it. National democracy. Reduces the administrative strain in our state. We are building here in the Republic a democracy that will, tan, that will stand the test of time. A democracy tied not just to the voices of the people, but to the very vitality of the nation itself. To do so, we must introduce new institutions uh, to encourage political participation amongst the masses, especially for the ruralists whose votes we, we rely on. It is their energy that will drive the state forward, and it is their belief that, that will keep us grounded as we move into the future. National voting rallies a push to civic culture and enthusiastic political rallies will be a start, but be assured this is the work of a generation. Indeed. Now, everyone get down to the Your League. Coxetau, is that? That's the bandits in. Do you have to do all of your political tree first? Oh, you're not even there yet. Wow. Okay. Good. Um, that means we're still ahead. Fantastic. Prepare the stuff. Core population. 
I always love to integrate on Nega. That's annoying. Otherwise, it's 18.62 million. So how many people do we regain that? 153,000. I must add this all up one day. Why don't I do it right now, actually? Anyway, get the fucking calculator out. Like Spike? Yeah, I like Spike. Why is the fucking phone wet? Now, what do we got? 153. Plus 59. Thank you. And um, we'll just be working on this. Whatever. Yeah, that. Ooh, control that position. Good idea. Uh, plus. Th Ooh, no, that, 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 that did not work well. 153 plus 59 plus 310. Plus 230. Plus 117. What's that? It's like plus 5. Plus, I don't know, 2.5. And then there's more money itself, which is 231. We'll, we'll say, yeah, 231. Just over uh, about 1.1 million people. Didn't add in decimal plates for places for everything, but 1.1 million people is not, um, it is not anything to scoff at, indeed. But all right, lads, I hope you enjoyed today's, oh, 110, yeah. Uh, good, good place to end it, though. But all right, lads, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. Um... Shout out to our patron, Ryan McCready. I shall see you down in the comment section of this video. I shall see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye.